Okay, John Scott here for WrestleLine. I'm joined by the internet sensation, I've got to say, the YouTube <laughs> sensation, and now wrestler for the last couple of years. How are you feeling? Simon Miller here at All Star Wrestling it's Towngate. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you know, like, especially, you know, if you're a British kid growing up, wrestling fan, you know about All Star mm. Wrestling, you know about Brian, you know all these things. So to actually have my first match here today is, is surreal, to say the least. But yeah, I'm quite made up. Literally just come out of there. Crowd was great. It's all just, it's a bit crazy at the moment. Yeah, yeah it looked fantastic out there. And, and the one thing with All Star Wrestling is they do pick a lot of theatres to do their wrestling. Yeah. So it is working to one side, but it's, it's a very unique uh, atmosphere out there. How is that as a performer in the ring um, having to adapt like that? Is it easy? Is it comfortable? Or does it take a little bit of working out? I think it always takes a little bit of working out. I don't think anyone would ever say they just go out there. And, well, some do, right? Yeah. Some people are just prodigies at this. I guess in one way you can say it's quite cool because there's only one, only one place to look, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you're so used to working in a... I think the thing for me is, sometimes, you know, you're, you're getting up and you realise, oh, I'm looking at a curtain. <laughs> Shift that body around. But, excuse me. But that's what the experience is all about. I love, I love being in uncomfortable situations, as crazy as that sounds, because usually that means you're doing something that, A, you care about, mm -hmm. and B, is probably pretty cool. Hence why you're uncomfortable. Because you're probably like, I don't know how to adapt to this. So... Yeah, no, I loved it. I really, really did love it. That was, whatever happens now, I'll, I'll, that one will keep in here. We'll lock it away. Yeah, absolutely, no, it was a fantastic performance out there as we'll show some of the clips. Uh, now for Simon Miller, this year, 2020, it's going to be a busy year, I can tell. I so. um, what are you? What are some of your goals? Do you set goals at the beginning of the year or are you somebody who just a little bit more spontaneous? I mean, I am spontaneous in the sense I think it's important to be that way. But I, my overall all goal is just to get better, which I know is a really lame thing to say. But, you know, when I first started wrestling, five matches in, got injured, was out for eight months, kind of made me realize you, you have to have these dangling carrots that you go after, but ultimately you've got to make sure the foundation's in your ground game. Mm -hmm. That's what takes you anywhere. So I just want, like, so I got to the end of 2019, I thought, you've got better. Am I great? No. <laughs> Do I still have a long way to go? Of course. But have you got better? Yes, I have. So I think over the next 12 months, work more, hopefully debut for more promotions like this, and get to the end of the year and go, okay, sweet, we're a little better than we were. And if any other opportunities come up in the meantime, that's an added bonus. Absolutely. Uh, I also speak with this. Uh, some of your sort of people growing up that you followed as a child, who were some of your favourites? And also, since you've been training to be a wrestler, has it made you appreciate anybody else that you maybe hadn't thought of in the past? I mean, I, this is the worst answer, but I appreciate everybody. Like, once I started training, mm -hmm. and I'm, I don't, I don't want to knock anyone. I don't think that if you don't train, you can't have an opinion. Of course you can. With human beings, we react. But it really did make me appreciate guys and girls that have made it. Even when they do a headlock takeover, you're like... It's not that it's, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's, not, that it's not. It's not that easy. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard, mm -hmm. but there is a technique to that, and you start to realize. I understand why that person got to got to where they did. I mean, growing up, the first person I ever saw was Bret Hart. You know, my dad was lucky; he got Sky yeah. because of his job. He had to get Sky when right. nobody had Sky. So we were like, "It's got hundred <laughs> channels." I, I saw Bret Hart. I don't know what it was. Wrestling doesn't make sense like that, does it? Just I like this guy. And then I was, you know, as a, a kid in the Attitude Era, so Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah. was just the man. But then the cool thing was, when I got older and started to appreciate wrestling on a different level, then you do go back mm -hmm. and you look at like Johnny Storm or uh, Jody Fleisch yeah. or, or any of these guys. There's yeah, loads, yeah. I could list them forever, mm -hmm. who not only have a British way of doing things. I mean, even Davy Boy Smith to mm -hmm. a, a, obviously, I don't know Davy Boy Smith and unfortunately I never will. But to be able to make the inroads that he did in a time before social media and the internet, you're like, wow, that's amazing. And... Then you realise, you look at the British spin, especially how it got stayed alive by, you know, guys like Doug Williams and... Yeah, yeah, the FWA. Oh, honestly, all yeah, of this yeah. stuff, and you think, it's just a fountain of stuff here, and I can't quite get over that all this was happening away from my field of view, because you can just be so insular yeah. with wrestling, but then you go to Japan, and oh man, yeah, it's yeah. too much. <laughs> Excellent answer. So, so there's a, lot, a whole variety of things now. Obviously, you've been on the other side of things where you've sort of analysed stuff, and you've yeah. reviewed stuff. What is that like to now be a performer out there? Have you sort of had to take a, like critique yourself now when you review yourself? Do you think a little bit differently from the other side? I do. I mean, the one thing, I, even when before I got in the ring, I always tried to make sure that my criticisms were about storylines and angles. Because right. I'm just not the type of guy who was a crap match. Hey. Let's say it is a crap match. The people hey. involved probably know it's a crap match. And it happens. Like, you watch football, sometimes players have bad games. I think you could, everyone, because everyone can write a story, mm -hmm. but some people are better than others. So I always try to do that. But yes, now I'm on the other side. Again, my respect levels have just, I mean, I respected them anyway, but now it's just, it's just so hard. Mm -hmm. And there's so many little things that go on it and you have to think on the fly and you've got to be able to listen. It's, 
it has absolutely opened my brain. But in terms of my matches, hey, I tell everyone, I'm open for criticism. Can't live your life that way. Yeah. If I started doing that and then I opened my own door, you can call me crap, you can call me rubbish, you can tell me to go back to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it annoys, it annoys me every now and then. But that is, if you put yourself out there, you gotta take it. Yeah, you're only human. Yeah, you're only human. You're and only if you human. wanna throw some barbs, it's mm. all good. I'll yeah, take yeah. them and hopefully I'll use them to get better, so. Yeah. No, no, I thought it was a fantastic performance out there, me personally. And also, I think the added advantage for you is you're able to communicate to the to the person in the audience. Oh, I think that's a good advantage for yourself going forward. So that's my, uh, as an observation, not that I'm very important, but my observation at Matthew you was... you said nice things. Yeah, so. yeah that's good. Um, I hope so. I mean, engaging with the crowd is the number one thing, yeah, right? Yeah. It's the number one thing. Yeah. Uh, now, where people can find you, obviously, you've got a lot of social media. Where can we uh, find all yeah, this stuff? Well, obviously, What Culture Wrestling. Yeah. I'm doing YouTube videos with them. I've got my own watch uh, YouTube channel, Simon Miller. 316. Gotta be busy this Why guy. did I put three? Actually, is it just Simon Miller? <laughs> I don't remember. Just search for Simon on YouTube. Yeah. But my Twitter is Simon316. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, if I could go back in time YouTube. and remove it, I didn't know I was going to be this embedded in it. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time, like, name dropping like crazy, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin replied to one of my tweets. Right. Nothing major. And I was just so, oh, you should have been elated. I was like, mm. he's going to see the three ways. He's going to think I'm a flipping nerd. <laughs> my Instagram is Simon316, but it's mm. there now. It's yeah, out there yeah. too much. I can't it's, change it's it. So, you, it's yeah. part of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am a nerd. Let's not pretend otherwise. <laughs> I talk about wrestling and I am a, I'm a mark cares. I don't care. No, it's fantastic. Uh, and you going forward just quickly, uh, any events coming up that we, uh, people can check you out? Oh, man, yeah. I mean, I've got loads of problems. EWE, EWA. Hopefully, I'll be back here uh, at All Star. Uh, man, I need my calendar, really. UPW, yeah, UBW. Yeah, yeah. Why they have those two close names, I don't know. I get confused. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so many nice people have come out to, to, to give me booking. So yeah, fingers crossed yeah, yeah. we can continue on with that over the next 12 yeah, months. Yeah. Good. Uh, and good luck for the future. Oh, thank, thank you, you for the appreciate it. Yeah, no, you're, you're very welcome. welcome. You're very thank welcome. You.